This is my fancy, fancy app. It's my Canvas Painter from Code.org. It's Lesson 17 from their CS Principles class. I am super proud of it. I'm super proud that I just did this app thing. Um, this coloring stuff is part of the puzzle on 20, but I have all the features here. I'm just going to give you a quick tour. But ah, etch. Nah, original. I like my spray paint though. So I'm going to walk through my code real quick. There's a whole bunch of it. And then I'm going to walk through the design process and kind of show you what these apps are going to look like. Give you an idea of what yours should look like. I'll also put my code in the description. Keep in mind, I'm going to do this quickly. I'm just walking through the code. I also have a video of me building this whole thing. It is a bit longer because I walk through every puzzle, every section of Lesson 17, and how to complete it correctly as I build my app. So if you want more detailed explanation, definitely check out that video. Let's see. Let's get started. Set active canvas. So right here in our code, well, first let's do design stuff because what's canvas? Canvas is going to be this new element that we have access to. So we clicked and dragged it way back in the beginning lesson. I originally named my canvas canvas area, and that's its ID. So that's how I reference it when I use it. And then we, throughout each level, we slowly set up buttons like the delete button, original button, etch, spray paint, and random. All of them having IDs. Notice that I use their name and then BT, followed by BTN for their um, prop and their property ID. So, and all of those IDs, remember, are how we reference them in our code. So the first thing I did was set active canvas. I set the stroke color, which is just the lines I'm drawing, right? Rah! You hold down shift to draw because that was part of the lesson as well. Um, and then event list. Uh, I create an array. So the reason I have an array up here is we are taking the events from this function, right? So what this function is doing, canvas area, mouse move. If I'm moving my mouse over the canvas and my shift key is pressed, I am drawing. If that is the case, I'm grabbing my canvas array or my event list. I'm grabbing event list and I'm appending to the end of it this parameter event. Well, what is event? Event is the X, Y location. Every time I draw a dot here, event has my X and Y location, right? Along with mouse speed, a whole bunch of stuff. It, it has all of that information. So what we're doing with event list is we're making a, well, an array, a list of events. And in each event, we have all the exact coordinates of the mouse during when it was drawing that dot. The reason we want that info, well, and wait, then in this if statement, we actually, you know, draw the, and output the circle. The reason we want this event list and to keep all that info is because that's why this works. We know where the mouse was at each point. It's a big string of data. So we then, we then grab a uh, like random button and we use a for loop and that's what we're doing in all of these a for loop and iterating through or going through that entire list of events so every tiny dot that was drawn we say i is going to be less than the event list than all of those lists in the event dot length so that will make sure that as we and then i plus plus so we're adding one to i one to i each time that will make sure we loop through this and see every event for every single one of those events for this random button one and that's what random does we are saying event list i which that at first is going to mean zero so that's the first item in our array because i start at zero and then event list one and then event list two right so each time we have a number here because we're going through every event we appended to our big list our big array and checking the offset x and then we check the offset y okay which is going to be the x's location i believe and the y's location and then whatever the x and y were at that time which is the dot that we would have drawn right we then pick a random number between 1 and 30 to cover 
So that's why these circles are kind of going nuts. And I can do smaller. Maybe I'll do 20. I don't know. Oh, I'd have to reset this. But we redraw every one of these circles using that array. So now random. Random doesn't literally take the stuff on the screen and do this. It grabs the information from an array and quickly, before we even can tell, redraws everything after it puts it through this loop that changes the size. Same thing down here with the original button. The original button doesn't save like an image of what we've drawn. It uses the data, it uses our for loop, and quickly redraws it. Dot radius is going to be used by... Oh, our dot radius function is for mouse speed. One of the parts of this lesson was talking about if I move my mouse really quickly, it draws small. And if I move it slowly, it draws larger dots. So, and I've changed this several times. Mine's now five. Uh, mine's automatically a size of four. I think there's a smaller at first. And so, mouse dot. And what this does, dot radius is being called by our original draw function. And call just means asked, right? Dot radius right here. So the dot radius is being called here because this is the circle size. And we're saying, hey, dot radius, here's the movement X and the movement Y. So that's the speed of our mouse at that second or that one, one thirtieth of a second or however fast it's going to run. And it gives it the speed as argument. So now our parameters, this is the actual speed of the mouse at X, speed of the mouse at Y. And we create this new variable. The reason we're doing math absolute value is because even if I'm going uh, left, which is negative on an X axis, that's fine. I don't care if it's positive or negative. I just want the absolute value to figure out exactly how fast I'm going. So I might be going to the left at, you know, however fast. I don't want it to be negative. So absolute value for X and Y, and then we calculate speed and return uh, through this formula the mouse size, how big our dot will be. Spray paint is doing something similar to what we've done up here. Um, I just set a fill color. Make sure if you're messing with fill colors that you set stroke color, set fill color back to your original uh, settings, which I actually increased to four, so I should do that here. Um, that's something I forgot to do, and it was problematic at first. Same with etch. Etch is going to mess with stroke color and stroke width, so make sure you're, you're changing those back down here. Set stroke color, set fill color. Does it mess with fill? No, see, and so I want to change that stroke width. Oh, is three automatic? Okay, then I'll leave that. Um, and this is just setting it back to black. And again, notice we're using that loop. We're iterating through the event list to redraw everything. Uh, this one, we're adding 10 to I each time because we're jumping ahead 10 circles or 10 dots and drawing a line in between them. So, because this is our line, right? This is the uh, X coordinate of the first dot, the Y coordinate of the second dot. This is the X coordinate of the first dot. If I show text, the Y coordinate of the, uh, no, X coordinate of first, X coordinate of second. We then jump ahead 10 dots x coordinate of second, x coordinate, y coordinate of second. So these are the second dots coordinates and the first dots we draw a line between them. That's why we're adding 10. That's why we are saying the length of the event list minus 10. So that is a fast tour through the code, the functionality, the design, um, and it's a really cool application. It's fun to do um, and yeah, you get to be really creative with it. So again, I'm going to post my code. Do not plagiarize. Do not just copy my code. That is cheating. But something awesome about programming is sharing, um, collaborating, building off, making better, or you hate it and you just build something completely different. Regardless, I'm going to post mine below a link to it. You should post yours in the comments. I'd love to see what you did, especially for the part 20 where we get to do our own thing. I'm pretty proud of my spray paint. Not sure if you noticed. Um, I'd love to see what you did. I'd love to check out other ideas.
And if you're stuck on something, check out my other video of me walking through every single lesson, every single thing I coded. Uh, enjoy your coding? Enjoy your coding. Ha <laughs> ha.